Shalom. Shalom and welcome. Welcome to the White Rose Family Channel. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Simoniah. And these are the words I'm compelled to present before an awakening set apart nation to you who are drawn by the Almighty Creator, the Almighty Father Yahuwah, to his word which he manifests before us, that came before us in the name of Yahusha. I say to you, O Yasharal, and I've given this example, I want to give it again. Consider you had four different glasses. One completely filled with water, one with rocks in it, just rocks and water, one with sticks and water, one with sand and water, sand, sticks, and rocks, and just water. Which one will give you the most water? Though there are four glasses and they contain water, I submit to you, we as set apart children of Yahuwah contains his word, his word working in us and through us. It's like water. But if there's debris and contents in the water, which glass do you think if you was a rankum that had the most water? The one with just water, of course. Then you have rocks, sticks, and sand. Either way you look at it, if you remove the debris, some of those glasses would have more water than others. I submit this analogy to you, oh, listen to these words drawn by the Almighty Father, who seek to do his will. Begin to look at those who are teaching Pastors, bishops, priests, influencers, deacons, whatever you consider your shepherd, your moray. Look at all the different names people are using to recognize the Almighty Father Yahuwah and that his word came in Yahushua's name. Look at the different names and ask yourself, who's giving you the most water? The most water. For if you see the flaws in these camps, communities, and fellowships, if you see flaws, if you see directions given to allow compromises within these groups, camps, communities, and fellowships, something is wrong. Correction is coming. Whether it be the Almighty Father drawing you away and out of such, or you introducing the correction, and that leader, that pastor, that shepherd, that deacon, is being refined and renewed and disciplined on the matter of pursuing set of partners. Choose who's giving you the most water, my brothers and sisters. Or if you are one providing water, the word, the reflection of the life in the scriptures, how much are you doing to contribute towards the maturity of Yasharal? Yasharal, in time manifests. Let's continue with this series. Part six, motion needs. You hear me talk about the realities of end times because it is important that we begin to recognize the realities of end times and recognize what are the needs. In this case, my brothers and sisters, I want to bring your attention to motion needs. Do you believe it'll be a final exodus? Do you believe there will be wars and rumors of wars? Do you believe there will be earthquake in diverse places? Do you believe there will be disease, famine, and pestilence? Do you believe that the tribulation will be catastrophic and severe? If you believe any of these, O Yasharal, the next question would be, where do you stand in the realities of what's unfolding? Can you come to the grips that there are motion needs, motion. Whether you're going to the grave and saying, I'm not going anywhere, or whether you're moving in a direction to be a contributor towards the final exodus, or whether you're moving to the areas that the Almighty Father will have you die for Yahushua's name, or be the last words to that person on milk, that newborn babe that just didn't believe or didn't know and they find themselves in the path of the destruction that's coming. Are you one that would be saying, be comforted, my brothers and sisters? This is the plan of the Almighty Father. Just pray and praise him. 
in spite of what's unfolding, in spite of if we're getting swallowed up by earth as a result of an earthquake or destroyed or killed as a result of bomb going off, we must face the fact of Yasharal movement will enlarge in ways that we never imagined. So what are the motion needs? My brothers and sisters, once you have listened to this message, begin having discussions on one's opinion of idols and statues. You see, sometimes idols and statues, knowing that they are wicked, but can be a distraction. And I'm going to talk about that. Are we following the ways of idolaters? Are we spending more time consuming talking about idols, statues, ornaments, and jewelry, and vanity? Motion needs, my brothers and sisters. Let me talk about one of the major distractions in consumer of times is idolatry. People running around with big medallions on their neck with Yahuwah's name on it or Yahushua's name, whether it be modern Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew. People walking around with menorahs hanging from their neck. Menorahs set on the altar of their fellowship. People who walk around with embroidered images of Yahuwah's name on their garments. Statues, wood carvings with Yahuwah's name. These are distractions, my brothers and sisters, and a violation of the commandment. Come with me to Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. Exodus 20, 4 through 6 reads this. You do not make for yourselves a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above or which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, your almighty one, am a jealous all, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving commitment to thousands, to those who love me and guard my commands. You might say, I'm not bound down to them. How many of us has went to a camp, a fellowship, a group, and the leader of that particular gathering had on a garment that had Yahuwah's name on it. And you bow down for him to pray for you. Where do we see the scriptures telling us to bow down before someone who is erroneously violating the commandments? You see, we bow down sometimes and we don't even realize it. Bowing down before the altar of an assembly that have a menorah on it or Yahuwah's name or Yahushua's name carvings on it. Thinking we've come to the head of the assembly and bowing down before Yahuwah, but our eyes may be focused on the carving, the name, or we may think we've approached the pinnacle of what the leader represents. Leviticus 19.4 says, do not turn to idols and do not make yourselves Molded mighty ones. I am Yahuwah, your almighty one. The scripture version says Elohim, which is plural. And if you're tuning in for the first time, you will discover that when I see Elohim, I am compelled to say the almighty one, for Yahuwah is the almighty one. My brothers and sisters, do not let distractions cause us to neglect motion needs. In other words, are we busy talking about this thing or that thing? What we seen yesterday? What's behind us? Are we busy focus for a moment debating and arguing, debating and with perceived good intentions, killing time, talking about things that are unnecessary? This can cause us to neglect motion needs, actions that needs to occur, O Yasharal. 
Believe it or not, idols and statues consume time. Beware of the words. And I'm quite sure you've heard people say, look at my medallion. Look at my Hebrew garment. Look at the words Yahuwah or Yahushua or Menorah on it. Look at the jewelry that I wear, the earrings, the headbands. You've heard people say their conversation piece or it's sitting on the table. It's a conversation piece. I say to you, it's a distraction. If we're busy talking about that, it's a distraction from what we're supposed to be doing. The actions, the movement we should be taking towards growing strong. Movement is coming, my brothers and sisters. Movement requires identifying motion needs and being focused. What say you, O Yasharal? What say you? I speak of this often, O Yasharal, and feel the need to speak of it again. The time is now to recognize the realities of end time prophecies and what we're supposed to be doing. What actions should we be taking? And does that not require motion? If we need to do one thing or another, isn't that identifying motion needs? Come with me to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6 through 9. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6 through 9. For it reads, For Yahuwah gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And he treasures up stability for the straight, a shield to those walking blamelessly. Walking blamelessly. Does that describe being in motion? to watch over the paths of right rulings and the way of his lovingly committed ones he guards. Then you would understand righteousness and right rulings and straightness, every good path. What's on the path? Are we in motion? Are we focused? It's time to discover what connects and what contradicts this set apart way of life? As we press into each day, end times will prove the need to gain knowledge quickly. Take heed to this word, my brothers and sisters. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14, verse 6. It reads, A scoffer shall seek wisdom, but find none. But knowledge is swift to him who has understanding. You see, knowledge can be swift. Whether one says movement or motion, the need to act requires discerning the living guidance from the spirit of Yahuwah, whose word comes in Yahushua's name. Let me continue, my brother, my sister. Do not underestimate the living words from Abba Yahuwah. Consider Hebrews 4th chapter, verse 12 and 13. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 through 13 says this, For the word of the Almighty One is living and working and sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting through even to the dividing of being and spirit, and of joints tomorrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all are naked and laid bare before the eyes of him with whom is our account. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. Let these resonate, my brothers and sisters. For there are those who are among us who will say, you don't know me. You don't know anything about me. They will say, you haven't walked in my shoes. They will say, don't get in my business. My brothers and sisters, I just read to you where it says that Yahuwah knows the thoughts, the intentions. Are we not aware that the spirit of Yahuwah dwells in us, works in us, through us, one towards another? 
Are we not aware that by him knowing the thoughts, he indeed, through his words, sent in user's name, can reveal the thoughts and the intents of others? You see, my brothers and sisters, let us not forget the very thing we say we believe, the very person we say we believe. Take time to examine one another's abilities as it relates to motion needs and what needs to be occurring to successfully work together, building a unified, set-apart family and nation. Stay with me, my brother, my sister. Hear these words. He who ignores the details will find himself neglecting those least among us, resulting in greater judgment. I want to take you to James 1, 16 through 20, my brothers and sisters. James 1, 16 through 20. And we're still on the subject of motion needs. It says, do not go astray, my beloved brother. If you are, go on one way or another. That's motion. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow of turning. Having proposed it, he brought us forth by the word of truth for us to be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Bringing us forth, my brothers and sisters, that's motion, motion. So then, my beloved brothers, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of the Almighty One. Let us consider all that is necessary. I'm continuing on in the first chapter of John, uh, James with verses 23 through 27. And we're still on the subject of motion needs. Hear these words. James 1, going to 21st through the 27th verse. Therefore, put away all filthiness and overflow of evil, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your lives, and become doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, Doer, that means motion. He is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and immediately forget what he was like. But he that looked into the perfect Torah, which means instruction, that of freedom and continues in it, not becoming a hearer that forgets, but a doer of work, that one shall be blessed in his doing of the Torah. If anyone among you think he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is worthless. Clean and undefiled religion before the Almighty One and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unsustained from the world. These are action statements, my brothers and sisters. Look at the life in them and understand motion is required. Actions are required. Have discussions, my brothers and sisters, regarding motion needs. What is needed for me to do this or do that, to act like this or act like that? As it relates to the expectations that are set forth in the scriptures, motion needs, discover different perspectives and recognize what is needed, my brothers and sisters. Have these discussions, and we will open up endless fountains of water, endless instruction. We will come to understand the desires of the Almighty Father more readily than not. Have these discussions, my brothers and sisters. Hear these words that I'm about to pronounce and ask yourself, what do they mean for such a time as this? Are they needed for motion? Craftsmen, tailors, or seamstress, do we need a place to stay? Well, we need clothes before we go into motion. 
for we will not be running around butt naked or naked physically. There will be tailors and seamstresses that will bring about the clothing we should wear, absent embroidery of the name Yahuwah and Yahushua and the menorah on it, simple clothing, craftsmen, engineers. Will we not need builders among us? Foot, feet wear. Do we not need something if we get ready to get in motion? Will it be not? Would it be wise to take a journey without anything covering your feet or your foot? Motion needs. I talked about clothing. Wheels. From the smallest to the largest. Will it be a bike, a skateboard? Would it be a car, a truck, a bus? train, a plane. Have we, can consider, have we given consideration to however we may travel in these end times? There are needs that must be fulfilled in order to accomplish this motion, this movement. Supplies and resources, leadership. Should we not have a destination knowing where we are headed? I assure you, if you will follow every episode of End Time Manifest, you will discover there is much work to be done and that there are motion needs, my brothers and sisters. Let us begin to pay attention to such details. Not worry, but pay attention. You see, when we begin to have discussions, it reveals people's priority. What are yours regarding motion needs? What priorities do you have? What person do you recognize that have the skill sets to think about the priorities? For see, some will be ordered to leave everything behind, do not turn back for anything. And some would be ordered to carry supplies and resources as Joshua all began to come together. And some will hear that in their neglect, they cannot receive supplies and resources for whatever reason. You see, we have the parable of the maidens where some had oil and some did not. But we also have instructions that say walk filled with the spirit. We also have scripture that say the almighty father knows our need and will supply our needs. You see, so we must keep the scriptures whole, keep the connectivity. Let us not waver from understanding that we must look to he who is the living almighty one to direct our actions, our motion, as he see fit. Motion needs, my brothers and sisters. I am not presenting all in the, an exhaustive list, but things to trigger the mind, the body, the spirit to be in preparedness, to know when to act. End times will prove that motion needs encompass people and things. Be alert, my brothers and sisters. The time is now to be alert to the motion needs. Have those discussions. Begin to demonstrate the actions that reflect having possession of the needs for movement, for motion. The final exodus will come to be. And I read often Isaiah 11, 12, I also read in the 43rd chapter of Isaiah and the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah and other passages talking about the final exodus. Know this, my brothers and sisters, do not neglect the details. Sometimes there are people that just say, I ain't worried. Don't be worried about all that. No, we're not supposed to worry, but we're not supposed to ignore. Nor receive details in building the ark. Musha and Aharon received details of leaving Mitzrayim. Motion needs. They didn't leave out empty handed, my brothers and sisters. Trust and believe. My brothers and sisters, if you listen to this from beginning to end, I pray that you received a morsel, a nugget, a component that strengthened your perception that the Almighty Father is reaching out to you it's reaching out to us 
is reading out, reaching out to his children the things that bring and will prove to bring his plan together successfully. If you listen to beginning and I thank you for your patience, your tolerance, your pursuit of set of partners, your desire to do the will of the Almighty Father. I pray that you are in good health. I pray that you more than anything are able to discern how to respond in whatsoever state this physical body is in. How to respond and recognize the plan of the Almighty Father and act and demonstrate the motions that he presents before us. On that note, thank you. If I said anything set apart that is a reflection of set apartness, consider subscribing, sharing, like. Let us utilize the tools we have in this algorithm and spread the word to others. Some may receive direction to this site, this channel, and they may hear or learn something that you did not hear. And they may talk about things that they have learned from the words I've presented, O Yasharal, and they may miss something that you received. Let us look at how we manage our time, what responsibilities we take on. Enough said on that. I thank you, my brother, my sister. I look forward to witnessing the power and might of Yahuwah rise up among us, among his children. On that note, shalom. Shalom, my brother, my sister, my family. Shalom.